Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. During the service, several changes were made, and one of those is I'm not going to preach on what I was going to preach about. And so if you go ahead and turn your scripture to John chapter 10. It is interesting how the Lord uh, does things. I've been avoiding, trying to, I should say, I've been trying to avoid the gospel of John. You say, what are you talking about? Well, for about six years, I've been feeling in the back of my heart that I want to preach a series on the gospel of John. And I've, I've done a lot of prep work for that. And so I've been avoiding preaching from John because I knew at some point when the Lord releases me, I'm going to be preaching a series on the gospel of John. So that's why I've been trying to step. But this morning, let me tell you how this happened. This morning, uh, it really wasn't that bad early this morning when I was at the church and and I was in here praying and had my uh, music playing on my iPhone. And a song came on. I never, it's on my iPod, so I'm sure I heard it before, but I, I never paid any attention to it. And all of a sudden, I noticed one phrase in there. And, and the song said that we are kept in the fold. We are kept in the fold. And if you've ever taught Sunday school or preach, you know that how all of a sudden, you know, sometimes things are, are hard coming to you, but all of a sudden, sometimes things just, boom, it's there. And f- for some reason, that one phrase um, got, got just stuck on my heart, kept in the fold, kept in the fold. And then I went from there into my office to, to do my reading and studying for the morning, and, and it just so happened the next chapter was John chapter 10 about the fold, about the shepherd. And I said, well, Lord, I know we got communion planned and whatever, and then all through Sunday school, and later when I got up there, uh, got up here, I just couldn't get away from that. Kept by the fold, kept in the fold. And so I want to talk to us this morning about the keeping place, the keeping place, the place that we are kept Amen. Could you stand for the reading of God's Word and, and keep your Scripture open and, and we'll refer uh, 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 back to some Scriptures in a moment. But just let me just spot read through here. Verse 1, Jesus is speaking. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. Verse 2, but he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. So first of all, let's establish there is a sheepfold, and it has a door, and there is a shepherd. Amen. And so now let's move to verse 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. I am the door, literally, I am the door of the sheepfold. That's what Jesus said. And then he said in verse 8, All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. The door of what? The door of the sheepfold. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. The thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and destroy. But I am come that they might have life, and they might have it more abundantly. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. Amen. Notice what it says in verse 7. I am the door of the sheepfold. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. Amen. The keeping place. Hallelujah. How many glad to know there is a keeping place? You know, we talk about the wonder of His saving us. Let me talk about another wonder of His keeping us. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Let's lift our hands to the good shepherd. Let's thank Him. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank You this morning. You know the design You have for this service through the preaching of Your Word. Open up my heart, Lord, to what You have to share. Lord, You'd save somebody this morning. You'd help somebody this morning. Lord, You'd arrest somebody that has been slipping away from You this morning. Lord, You'd make the rest of us be aware of the security the security that we have in you 
And we bless your name, Lord, and we thank you for the goodness of God to us. And thank you for your people. Thank you for your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. Amen. The song said, kept in the fold. I don't remember anything else about that song except kept in the fold. The keeping place. I, I, I drew it out by emphasis. And sometimes this has been a point of confusion because in one verse Jesus is referred to as the door of the sheepfold and then a few verses later he is referred to as the good shepherd and so you may ask yourself well which is he is he the good shepherd or is he the door of the sheepfold well I want to say he's both amen just like he's both the bread that feeds us and he's the water that quenches our thirst. Jesus is both the shepherd and he is the door of the sheepfold. Jesus as shepherd, he went out and he found the lost sheep. Aren't you glad he does this? How many knows he did that in your case? As the good shepherd, he went out seeking, he went out looking, and he found the lost sheep. That's why I like to sing victory in Jesus. He sought me and he bought me thank God he is the good shepherd as the good shepherd he goes out he finds the sheep and he leads the sheep to the fold hallelujah he led you didn't he to the fold I'm glad he's the good shepherd but not only is he the good shepherd that finds the sheep and leads the sheep to the fold he is the door of the sheep fold once the sheep are in the fold he is the one that stands at the entrance and keeps that sheepfold. Amen. The keeping place is safe because he is the door of the keeping place. Hallelujah. So I'm glad that he is both shepherd and he is the door of the sheepfold. Amen. The keeping place. I want to suggest number one that that is the place he keeps people. That is the place he keeps the sheep. I know I'm insulting you with the simplicity of it but what is a sheep fold for a sheepfold is the place the sheep are kept hallelujah he didn't save you and find you in the world and leave you in the world he brought you out of the world he brought you out of that crowd he brought you out of that influence and brought you to the influence of the fold the sheepfold the sheepfold is the place he keeps people Amen. I just want to say this morning, that's why you will not make it as a believer. You will not make it out on your own. You cannot make it isolated, out by yourself. Listen, I want to tell you, if you've ever been saved, if you've ever been found as a sheep, you cannot be out in that world, be a part of that world, be attracted to that world, and live, I'm not talking about existing, but living in pleasure in that you cannot do that and be kept. You will be lost. Why? Because the world will devour you. But the sheepfold is the place that he will keep you. Hallelujah. That's why as pastor I'm so emphatic upon church. Because church is the physical representation of the fold. Amen. That's why as pastor I'm so emphatic about church attendance. Why? This is the physical representation of, of the fold. You know, it's just this simple. If you're not really in church, you're not really in the fold. I, I, I know there's there's exceptions where people can't and, and we know all that but that's why I'm so emphatic that's why it's so disturbing when you see someone that is spending more time in the world than they are in the church more attracted to the world than in the church it's, it's disturbing brother Cruz because they're getting out of the fold and once they get out of the fold they cannot be kept some folks need to realize what it was like 
out of the fold the, the, the darkness the, 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 the evil the sin the despair the, the lack of fulfillment he meant aren't you glad you've been brought into the fold hallelujah and I want you to know if you're in the fold he's going to keep you that's where he keeps you you're going to make it hey man you're going to you're going to have the victory why the fold is where he keeps the sheep and secondly I want you to notice that is the place that nothing can get to you I know we face trials as people I know we go through difficult things but most of those things we got to understand though they're intimidating as a believer they are not fatal they can't take our salvation they can't take our faith they can't take our destiny amen they can sound intimidating listen just because you're in the sheepfold doesn't mean you can't still hear the howl of the wolves right you see that keeping place is a place that nothing can get to you the wolves can howl but they can't get into the fold and one reason is is the door of that fold is Jesus and he don't let the wolf in <laughs> oh hallelujah aren't you glad for the door of the sheepfold Hallelujah. It's a place nothing can get you. You know, you know the scripture here made reference, the thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and destroy. And, and you can look at that thief as the animal, the wolf, the bear, the lion. You can look at it as a person, a human that would steal a sheep for its value. But but the point of the of the scripture here is Jesus said, I am the door. You know, you gotta get that. He said that before he said the thief cometh but to steal, kill, and destroy. Before he said that, he said, I am the door. In other words, I'm not going to let those things in. They can come around. They, they, can, they can howl, but I'm not letting them in. Oh, you hear the wolf howl. He made it look so bad. He's not letting that wolf in. The thief comes and he circles around that fold looking for a way in. And Jesus stands there and says, you might, have, might as well go on and get out of here I'm not letting you in I'm telling you that's why we're safe in the fold amen the wolf can't get in the thief can't get in the Satan can't get in evil can't get in we are safe in the fold why he is the door and he keeps it out I said he keeps it out the only way those things can get to us is if we leave the fold Oh, it matters on what side of the door Jesus you're on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brother Keith, he's promised to keep everybody that's on the fold side of the door. But there's no promise to those that are on the other side of the door. Aren't you glad there's a place at nothing? I know the winds howl. I know troubles come. But you're going to make it. You are safe. You are secure in the fold because Jesus has purposed. I said Jesus has purposed that nothing is going to get to you. Nothing can reach in and pull you out. You say, well, the pull of temptation is so strong or the pull of this world is so strong. I want you to know if you're in the fold and if you'll stay there, nothing can pull you out. Hallelujah. I don't have time for theology, and I'm not going to do that, but I want to read some verses we kind of avoid because they've been taken and they have been distorted for wrong theology. But look at verse 27. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Listen, verse 28. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Sounds secure to me, doesn't it? Look at verse 29. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Here he's even deepened the analogy. We're not just in the fold, 
But in reality, the sheepfold, he's not just the door, but in reality, Brother Cruz, the sheepfold is in his hand. And he said, no man, nothing can take you out of my hand. My Father which gave you me, that allowed me to find you and bring you to the fold. He's greater than all. Ever howl the wolf, ever thief. He's greater than And my Father, nobody is going to take you out of my Father's hand. Now that's been distorted. That's been distorted eternal security. But let me tell you something. I believe in eternal security this morning. Hallelujah. I just read it. That's eternal security. No man can take me out of his hand, out of the Father's hand. But I want you to notice the eternal security I believe in has to be a conditional eternal security. It said no man can take me out of his hand. But it does not say that I can't take myself out of his hand. He didn't force me to go into the fold. Right? And he's not going to force me to stay. Amen. No man can take you out of my father's hand. No, no man, no demon, no sin, no temptation can take me out of the father's hand. But I can take myself out of the father's hand. What are you trying to say, pastor? Nothing can pull you out of that fold if you are determined that that's where you want to be. But the moment something enters in your heart, I'm not happy with the fold. I'm not happy with being here. I want what's out there on the other side. The moment you step over the threshold of that door of the fold, you're wide open to the wolves, ever destructive power, ever demon of hell all the darkness and deception of mine I'm telling you don't ever let it enter into your heart uh, that you don't want to stay in the fold it may get rough the winds may blow but you're safe in the fold and nothing and no one not anything can take you out of that fold stay on the right side of the door and the door will keep you safe last of all that's the place he will keep you and I'm not just trying to throw a pun here, but I really believe this. Listen to me. We've been talking about God keeping as far as keeping you from evil and stuff. But what I'm trying to say is the Father has ever intention not only keeping you in the fold, keeping you from harm, but He wants to keep you there. And I believe God in His mercy, I believe God in His mercy does listen to me God in his mercy does everything he can to keep people in the fold to keep them from leaving amen how many's had that happen to you you begin to look on the other side of the fold and find yourself moving up closer and closer to where you got into this thing and closer and closer to the door and about ready to take a step over the threshold what what happened God in His mercy spoke to you. He said, oh, you don't want to do that. God in His mercy orchestrated the whole service to talk right to you. In other words, the Father does everything He can to keep you in the fold. Amen? You know, it's been a while since I've revisited all the historical background of this, but I remember reading years ago that in some of the more primitive folds or corrals for the sheep and where there wasn't a lot of money, Brother Brock, that they would they would build a corral out of brush and bramble and whatever. And then as a door, it wasn't a gate, you know, like a wooden gate. But after the shepherd got the sheep in there, he lay down across the entrance of that makeshift fold and so anything that would try to enter the fold they had to face him lying across it makes sense does it when Jesus said I am the door of the fold now I, I want to just think about that for a moment before I, I make the point I want to make isn't that wonderful to know that when he got us in here he just he just bridges the gap in front of the fold he said I ain't letting anything in but have you ever thought the same door that keeps out is the same door that keeps in. See, he's not just a door to keep that howling wolf out. He's the door that does everything he can to keep us in the fold, to keep us from wandering, to keep us from leaving that place of security, of salvation.
Now I want you to think if that if that historical illusion is true, and you got this makeshift corral, and, and, and across the the entrance of that at night, that shepherd lies down. Not only to get in, do you have to walk over his body, but to get out, you have to walk over his body. Makes some sense now when you go to Hebrews and said, if you've known, if you've known this way, if you've tasted of the heavenly gift. If you know, then there remaineth no more sacrifice of sin. And if you willfully sin after you know the knowledge of the truth, you crucify the Son of Man afresh and put Him to open shame. And I really believe this. If you've really known salvation, Brother Ryan, you really experienced the Word, you've really been in the fold to leave that place, you have to walk over His crucified body. How many believes that? He's the door. You walk over his crucified body. Hallelujah. Would you come, music? I'm going to take this as ordained of the Lord. This came in a flash when I heard that little phrase, kept in the fold. I want to tell you, God will never be behind the impulse to leave. And I hope you realize a lot of the fold, the fold is where the sheep are. And one way you know you're really in the fold is, are you really with the sheep? Right? If you're there all alone, you're probably not in the fold. Because he keeps the sheep in the fold. Are you with it? Are you with the church? Are you with the body of Christ? Don't strike out on your own. One of the sad things, as an evangelist I used to hear, I'd, I'd go from time to time and I'd remember people, especially those that seen most in church, I'd remember from the previous revival, and I'd say to the pastor, sometimes on the platform, sometimes after, where's so-and-so? And it was so sad to hear, well, they're not in church anymore. You know why that's sad? Because to say they're not in church anymore really 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 means they're not in the fold anymore and they're wide open and make no mistake make no mistake out of the fold the thief will get you out of the fold the thief will kill he will destroy he will steal but notice what jesus said here he said again i say to you i am the door that that came before me or i'm sorry then Jesus said to them again, verse 7, Verily, verily, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep, and all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Later he said they heard the voice of the shepherd. I, I, again, I'm not going to get the theology, but I've come convinced, in a sense, sheep never leave the fold. They become something other than a sheep, and that's why they leave. Because he's here clear, he says here clearly that the sheep did not hear the false. The sheep did not hear those others. The sheep only hear the shepherd. And so if somebody is hearing that instead of the shepherd, something has happened. But let's go on and see what he says here. And I won't preach this all this morning. But he said in verse 9, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. Go in and out. That's not leaving the fold for the world. That's leaving with the shepherd to where he would lead. But I want you to notice here, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Hallelujah. He shall be saved. That's pretty positive. That's that's pretty secure. Let me say it one more. If any man enters that sheepfold, he shall be saved. Now, I've preached the qualifier. You've got to stay in the fold. But aren't you glad to know we are kept by the fold? Hallelujah. Would you stand and worship the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. Won't you just call him good shepherd? Hallelujah. Oh, you're the good shepherd. You're the good shepherd. Lord, help me this morning. God, anoint me. God, to give this altar call. Oh, God, anoint my mind and my heart. Let's, let's just pray this morning. Would you listen to me across the building as we're praying? You're here this morning. 
you're here this morning and you have to say, I'm lost. I really don't know about this God thing, this Jesus thing. I really don't know about peace of mind and peace of heart. I really don't know about eternal life. This, the knowledge that I would go to heaven if I were to die. I don't know any of that. I'm lost. I've got good news for you. There's a shepherd, a good shepherd this morning that's looking for you. He's looking for you. He brought you to this service so he could call your name. Say, I want you to be one of mine. I'll bring you to a secure place. If you're here this morning, you just be real honest. Say, I feel so lost in life. I feel so lost in terms of eternity. I'm just lost. Would you be real honest and say, that's me. I, I want to know this good shepherd this morning. Are you here? Are you here? I want to know this good shepherd. I'm telling you what he would do. Wherever you're at, he would come to you. He'd lay hold of you and pick you in his arms. And he'd bring you into his household, his sheepfold. Hallelujah. Are you here? You need Jesus this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to leave that open and I want to invite you in a moment. When these altars, these steps we use as an altar are open, I want to invite you to come. I want to ask another group of folks this morning. Some of you have really been going through it. How many be real honest and say, I've heard the howling of the wolves. I really have. Let me, let me see a hand. I've heard the howling. of Yeah, yeah. How many said, I, I, I've heard the rustling as the thief has circled around my life, circled around my house. How, how, how many lift their hands and say, I've heard that thief. And say, oh, but this morning, I feel something in my heart where the Lord is telling me that I am secured because the Lord is the door of the sheepfold and He's a good shepherd. He's not going to let that wolf in. He's not going to let that thief destroy and steal and kill. I want to talk to one more group of people. Please hear me. You're in the fold this morning. You're in the fold this morning. But if you were honest, the direction of your heart is to leave the fold. I have found though, being in church is a good indication. Not, not, not an con in inconclusive one or a conclusive one. But being in church is a good indication that you're in the fold. But I've also found folks leave the fold a long time sometimes before they leave the church. And I know it's a, it, it takes a point of honesty, but you'd say there's been things pulling. I've been looking on the other side of the fold wall. I've been being attracted by those things. And there's something in my heart I know that is pulling me out of the fold. I don't want that to happen. I want to stay in His hands. I want to stay in the... Listen, folks, we're not just talking about membership in a club we're talking about eternal life he just doesn't keep us from problems here he keeps us for eternal life hallelujah how many senses eternity in the house this morning in other words eternity is in the balance or folks are being weighed and so i'm going to have us to pray one more time and if you're in one of those three classes i want you to come number one you're lost, but you hear the shepherd calling your name this morning. Oh, he loves you. He cares for you. I want you to come in a moment. Number two, you're under attack. You hear the howling of the wolf. And you just need that sense of security. You need that reaffirmation from the Lord. Or number three, you have felt that pull, that siren's call to leave the fold. But oh, this morning you're going to say, no, 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 no. I don't want to leave the fold. I'm kept in the fold. I, I, I need my door. I need that good shepherd. And oh God, whatever you need to change in my heart, my mind, my thinking, my will, my feeling, whatever you need to change, change it, Lord, so that I never leave this secure place of the fold. If you fit in one of those three categories as we pray, I want you to come. Now church, would you pray that God would do something for eternity this morning? Would you pray across the building? Hallelujah. You're in one of those three categories. Would you begin to come right now? Hallelujah. Which category is between you and God? It's between you and God, but would you come? Would you come? Oh, would you come? Oh, if you need the shepherd, if you're lost, he's seeking for you. I don't want to leave the fold. Oh, wolf, you're a howling 
but I'm safe. I'm safe. There's others. Would you begin to come right now? Say, oh, shepherd, I'm so glad you found me. I'm so glad you put me in the fold. I'm so glad you keep me in that fold. Would you come? Hallelujah. 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 I want to invite the church to come with these. And others are coming. Church, would you come? Let's pray. Stay in the fold. Stay in the fold. They're leading me. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking to you. Listen to it. Listen to the Spirit. Oh, the Good Shepherd. That's Him. That's He that's calling your name. Oh, that's a good shepherd calling your name. That's the tug that you feel. Oh, say yes to the shepherd. Rescue me. Pick me out of the briars and the brambles. Pick me off the side of this cliff where I fall. Oh, good shepherd, I need you. That's the good shepherd calling your name. He's been looking for you. In fact, he's left the 90 and 9 to come searching for you. (laughs) Church, let's pray in this place. There's eternity in the balance. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Shepherd's calling for some. For others, he's trying to encourage you that you are secure. For others, he's trying to keep you in the fold. Stay right where you're at in me. Don't let anything take you out of my hand. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah. That's a shepherd calling your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, do you hear his voice? Do you hear his voice? Oh, I'm All over this building, from front to back, would you do something right now? Would you listen for the voice of the shepherd? Would you listen for the voice of the shepherd? He's calling some. He's trying to encourage others. He's warning others. But would you listen to the voice of the shepherd? Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. And not a word can harm me. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Sheltered in the arms of God. Sheltered in the arms of God. I want to tell those of you in this altar, you're secure. You're secure. No man's able to pluck you out of his hand. No man's able to pluck you out of the Father's hand. Stay right there. Stay in that secure place. Stay in that secure place. Oh, hallelujah. What a good shepherd. What a good door. (laughs) What a good door to the sheepfold. In him. They won't worry me for I've been Listen to the voice of the He's a good shepherd. He's a good shepherd. He's a good shepherd. Listen to the voice of the good shepherd. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name.
Hallelujah. Some of you truly are hearing the howling of the wolves. But oh, take one look at the door. Hallelujah. The door is Jesus. He is the door of the sheepfold. You stay in the fold and He won't let that wolf in. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we thank You. We thank You for Your protection. We thank You for Your goodness. We thank You for Your protection. Hallelujah. We thank You for the security. So let the storms retire. Dark heads rise. 